Welcome back to What the Devil episode 3. We missed last week, unfortunately, due to the Wolves game, which we'll get that onto that in a bit after Cobby Mayne, you saved all of us in the final minutes. We're going to miss it for here. something, miss it for that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> We're joined here again this week by Flex and yeah. Kane from our side. And let, you know, let's start off with the Wolves game. You know, I think that's a moment of a number of false dawns United have had this season. I think the Cobby Mayne moment could be finally one that actually isn't false for once. Do you think this year could be, you know, 2024 is a bit of a Ten Hag revival time? I mean, it's probably a bit too early to speak on it, but like <laughs> those moments like do get you feeling like that, don't they? Like, a la- especially because you go from one extreme to the next. Like, I was ready to give up when they would scored that equaliser, and then like, especially it being Cobby, like how well he's played this season, it does feel like it could be something to build on. But I think Bruno mentioned it like last month or so. Like, we won a game, and someone asked, "Is this something we could build on?" And he was like. Let's not speak about that. Let's like actually prove that it could be. So, but there's like some favourable fixtures coming up for the rest of the month. So it could be something where United get a couple more. Obviously, Villa's a bit more of a difficult one. But if United can get a couple of wins going in a row, then there could be something kind of building there. Because that's the problem. I think I saw a stat like the other day, and it was like United haven't won like four games in a row this season or something like that. That's what you need to like kind of build and build a bit of momentum. Martinez going off injured doesn't help that, but uh, you got Varane, you got Maguire back, Lindelof, so hopefully they can kind of do the job and get us getting feeling a bit more optimistic going forward f- to the end of the season. Yeah, I think leading away is not easy as well, man. And it's true, it's favourable yeah. on paper, Villa. but like, yeah, but I mean, like after Villa, like we've got oh, right, yeah, yeah. So it's like we have got like some favourable games paper, where you look yeah. at it, it's like. You know, you've seen what they've been doing at Kenilworth Road. Like, everyone who's played there, who's anyone, struggles. has struggled or just not won. <laughs> it's quite it's yeah. quite entertaining to watch Luton, actually, this yeah, season. Yeah, it is. And tough. it's weird to think that um, last time United played Luton there was, I think no it fans. was, uh, what, Alexis F-A-C- Sanchez's y- debut. No, no that was, it was, that was, was it not? Um, it was COVID. When we yeah. last or, or did we, did Sanchez's we play them debut COVID? was against Yeovil. Yeah, oh, was that, Yeovil. Okay, I went to that one. My yeah, ball was yeah. on the floor. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Never mind. yeah on the floor. Never mind. <laughs> on the floor. But yeah, still. no, that was that was a good game actually as well. Yeah, 2024 okay. has been f- like five games, four wins, one draw against Spurs. Admittedly, that Spurs game as well was Shame a bit drawn, bit up and down that yeah. one. But yeah, and it seems to be Rasmus Hoyland's year a little bit so far. Scored four games in a row. Club's I think, top scorer now. I think that's the one. That's the one that we're looking at now. Where to the point we were discussing earlier on the morning show, because um, the Athletic did a piece about Ivan Tony. Just yeah. about, it was a more of an opinion piece. It wasn't sources say United wanted to get yeah. him. It was just who could do with him. And they were sort of saying, you know, he's perfect for Hoyland. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's, you know, he, can, he knows the league, he's a guaranteed scorer, all this stuff. And we went, well, what does Hoyland need now? Now we've seen yeah. him. Does he need, because if Ivan Tony came in, he needs to be the main man playing every minute, 90 minutes. Mm. Our, our original plan with Hoyland was, we should never have got this kid as the main <laughs> kid. He should be the backup to somebody yeah. who's more senior. But now he's in this moment, you're like, I don't know, I think we maybe need to keep playing Hoyland, but he's just got someone to rely upon when he needs to step out a little bit, which he, isn't gonna be an Ivan Tony, who's just gonna be yeah. a bit part player. Yeah. So I, I was like, hmm. And what's Ivan Tony gonna cost as well? Mm. 60, 60, 70, 70 million, million yeah. Yeah. By, by the time it gets to summer. So it's like, I actually want to ask you guys, actually, and I might be a bit off topic, but it's like, what's the plan now with the striker situation? Or are we getting too giddy, too carried away with ourselves because Hoyland's 4-4 four four for the first time? In, he's the youngest yeah. player to do that at United. I still think the club should get one. Yeah. Oh, no, get a striker. Yeah. I'm saying what? Oh, get, but get like a Hoyland. starter yeah. where Hoyland I think does the, the original get plan. A get if a starter. Because if, if you want United to be, you know, let's say the United old, or the United of old, or like a, the next generation of United, you don't need just, you know, one striker who's a starter, one who's a backup. You want players who are potentially both starters. Like, you know, back in the good old days, <laughs> there was multiple four. strikers who could start. For, you had four strikers who could t- start for the club. You're like Schol- Schol- Cole, Sheringham, York. They're all fantastic forwards. Why would we then limit ourselves to one at the mm. moment? But not one. I'm just saying the one that comes oh, in, it? what type should he be? I, I You're would, saying like oh. starter, but... I, I think should he should be, be a starter and let, yeah. them, let them battle it out. If it's a starter but Hoyland keeps playing well, fine. Bench, yeah. bench the other guy who should be a starter. And if he doesn't play well, bench Hoyland. It's an interesting one though, because like when we did sign Hoyland, I don't think a lot of people... It was partly because not people, people hadn't seen much of him. 
but even through his dry patches, like you do, I think he's a lot further forward than people thought. Mm. Like even though there was, there was the goal issues, United just overall were playing poorly. Yeah, you could still see he had something. So I think he's further forward. Like that, I think it's a conversation to have, to be fair, whether you do just make him the main striker, get a backup, which could be an option. But I think because budget wise, it changes what you what you yeah, do. Yeah, that's you, true. If you, do you know what I'm saying? Because. If, yeah. you're, if, I, if we're going to say we need to get a proper top-notch striker, we've literally just spent 65 million. That is big money like on Hoyland with add-ons. And if you want to go and get another top-notch striker, you're looking at another 60-odd million again, 50-odd million again. Or do you get... What I was saying is like what we need is like a... I know they're not 10 a penny, but we need like a Julian Alvarez type. Like another, just that profile that's yeah. like... He might be 17 million, ready to go to the next step, but he's handy now and can come in and out, can play a couple of positions maybe. That's, that's the main Do you know what thing, I mean? The, like, the and Hoyland can thing. be the main guy. If, because I just think if we get a main guy, I'm not against it because you're right. Mm. You're right, Dylan, like, like we need best in class, we need top level, I want it all, 100%. And we shouldn't forget that he's proper young, Hoyland. That's he can't just, yeah. Do, yeah. do you know what I mean? He's only just turned 21, 21 the other day. Sorry, yeah. yeah, so it's like, if we put too much faith in him and go, don't worry, we can just go and get a bloody Neil Mope type striker to sit there just and get, no. Like, we have to still get someone proper, but just with where we're going to be with FFP, the amount of money we've got to spend and we've got to get this summer right, it's just interesting to just think ahead, for the, which the question said, is this 2024 sort of the revival for Ten Hag? I was just thinking of different things that are part of that, what that means. Yeah. And I think when we get to the summer, there's an interesting conversation of what, ha, what type of... Is he going to go, no, my original plan was for Rasmus was to be an understudy to someone. Just because he's had a good season in the end... I'm not going to move from that. He might do that. Or he might say, actually, like what you're saying, Kane, like, he showed us he's further ahead than we probably thought. Yeah. Let's spend the money elsewhere. It's interesting as well, because like, re- recent reports have came out and kind of said that United are planning to um, target players in like, the last years of their contract. And mm. like, even though they've sorted kind of some stuff out in January with loans and probably selling on Sancho and Van der Beek at the end of the season, they're still probably on that tightrope. So it probably would be a safer decision to kind of go for... Because I wouldn't say, even though the goal-scoring issues, I wouldn't say that a number nine is our biggest priority. Because we, we haven't scored goals because we had not controlled the games because Cobby only came in in November and we didn't really have anyone else who could kind of slow the game down in the middle. So I think you need someone to be kind of next to him because you can't expect Mainu next season and this season to play like... 50 no. if we're in Europe <laughs> yeah. 50 60 games like can't. Y- you can't so you need someone because you can't just have him coming but out but we are going to have to we are going to have to get a striker though because Martial's going to go yeah we got there is none that, like, we don't yeah. have a it's a massive problem that Hoyland's the only shot Rashford uh, let's be honest it doesn't count yeah. that front he can it's, fill in there the, here or there he can be a decent third option a plan C if it, needed literally he that and we should never B. really see him up front because yeah. you know what I mean unless he absolutely has to so we the load on Hoyland when we get to the summer, I don't know, like, it might not be a priority to get the main starting shot, yeah, yeah, but it's a priority yeah. to definitely get Some one. Yeah. You have to get one, because Hoyland can't be the it's only it, one. It's interesting as well, like, our, our academy always brings out wingers, but no strike. Where's the, the, the last two, I think Alanga played striker, but he's a winger. Yeah. And uh, Forson coming through now, he's came on a couple of times up front. He's a winger. He's a winger. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like, Joe Hugel is um, on loan now, I think, but like... It's He's not level. ready for that level. No, like, it's, level. it's weird. Not many strikers not in the many last strikers. few years. Bring back James Wilson, mate. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, that's a throwback. James Wilson. Bit, yeah. um, what, so what else in 2024 could help this be the revival? Because obviously we've got to talk about Ineos and how we attack the summer. You know, a lot of how our squad looks next season is going to depend mm. on what we can and can't do. Do we get into Europe or not? What type of Europe is it? The types of players we sell. I've been reading reports. Ineos want to really get into that, like you guys have been saying. What else do you think is going to be a key factor? Selling players is going to be massive. I'd love it if we could just sell someone for more than fucking what we got for David Beckham <laughs> in 2003. <laughs> oh, my days. Or 2004. Like, I think Dan James is like our fifth highest right. um, sell. Insane, bro. If we can get that sorted, and then that just helps you build a team by bringing players in because you can actually just spend that extra five million or be a bit smarter with your money coming in so then it kind of works both ways but if we can start selling well like because there's good players who's the players up for sale for I you that can fetch good money Maguire, uh, Maguire 
this is a test as well, I'd say. With Maguire, it's a test because we've had so many times where you go, this player needs to be sold, and they, they have a bit of a, like a, a revamp, and they, they're looking good. And then you don't sell them because you're like, oh, ooh, they're getting better for us. And then you lose all their, their value because that's the, se- the season which you s- should sell Maguire is now because he'll probably be playing a lot more over the next yeah, couple yeah. months, hopefully plays well, and then teams like potentially West Ham come back in and they'll be willing to spend the extra money because they, they've seen, oh, this guy's back, back playing well. If you can sell and like have that temperament to go, okay, right, he's playing well, but we know that we know kind of our where we want to go and we'll stick with that rather than kind of reacting to form. I think um, if we can do that, McTominay as well is a potential one. Um, there's probably, if, I mean, whether you can get Anthony kind of, whether s- offers come <laughs> in like this, there's, there's well, a lot of players. He's available, mate. I don't know. There's there's a lot take him for what, man, for what money, but <laughs> yeah. he's a sellable asset. Yeah. There needs there's to be so much more players. ruthless to the club. Mm. Like you said, you need to sell when stocks are high. Kind of the point, like, Kenny, get rid of McTominay while a club would still probably pay 25 million for him. Maybe get rid of Maguire, 25, 30 million there. Anthony, maybe, can't say he's a bit of a lost cause. But you know, they, he could have a bit of a rival, you never know. Like, you've seen, yeah. you've seen Richarlison at Spurs. Yeah. He's act- after being what would many would say just a complete failure at Spurs, 100%. he's actually doing pretty decent right now. Yeah. So you never know. But again, that's what the club will probably be telling themselves the entire time. Like, so with Ten Hag, the club keeping them Ten Hag, there was a report saying that. Uh, United have looked at what Arsenal did with Arteta, sticking by him despite the fact that they finished like eighth and eighth and then fifth, mm. and they're now you know back to back at least somewhat challenging for titles. But there needs to be a certain point where the club stops going, oh he could do this, he could do that, because it's not like a lot of these players are irreplaceable. You know you can get rid of Wamba Saka for maybe 20 million and bring in another player who would probably do just as good a job as him overall, playing as a person behind Dallo, or even getting rid of him, moving Dallo to a more secondary role in getting a better fullback, you could go, oh yeah, but wan can do this. It's like, but no, other people can as well. Yeah. There's so many players in the squad that United seem to act as if they were replaceable when they really aren't. Well, with that then, what about some of the big ones then? So let's just, let's just get to it. Bruno and Rashford. Well, Ten Hag said the other day, didn't he? He was like, we need to sell good players. And uh, when he was talking about how he couldn't get the January striker, he was like, we have, with FFP, you have to set, sell good players. So it's, it isn't going to just be those kind of like outcasts in the squad. There could be big exits. I don't see either of them going though. Like, maybe the thing is with Bruno as well. Like, maybe in a couple years I can imagine it because then he'll be kind of like approaching the end of his prime. Probably the last kind of time you can get like a decent sized fee for him. But I don't think either of those he are going to be go. off. Bruno can't go yet. Like I'm I. As much as you know, you try Not and people stay. People disagree with you. So, <laughs> I, I know, I know. <laughs> it's, a, um, it's a touchy subject yeah. online. But yeah. I feel like it's not even necessarily like the on-field stuff. I think also Bruno is being a bit hampered at the moment. This is a separate thing, but I feel Bruno is being a bit hampered at the moment by how United play. Is and he's a bit further back, and he's. It seems he's always being told, you know, progress wide, progress yeah. wide. So by the fact that he's got high creative numbers, Hoyland still wasn't scoring. It's because I don't know. I feel like he's being hampered a little bit. I quite enjoyed it when he had his whole kind of gung ho hero ball era, although that was very. <laughs> unsustainable it's strange I think he's so good for the club yeah it's strange though because like him and Hoyland haven't picked up like I wouldn't say them two have picked up a like relationship on the pitch at all no really like and like you said it's probably because he's been pl- he, it seems like he's picking up the ball and always looking through for Rashford Garnacho, and the instructions seem to have changed it I would like to, to go back a little bit more what it was before good. with Bruno being more direct because he feels a lot, lot more indirectly involved in the play now yeah. As opposed to before when kind of everything was around him and he was the one who was just it is hard. Forwards. It is hard with Bruno, isn't it? Because like his best seasons have come where it's all built around him. But then now he's 28 or 29? 29. 29 yeah, now. Like, it is like, like Ineos coming in, like you say, like are they going to want to build everything around that? But I, don't, I think Bruno can play. I think he showed it last season. He can play well not being the complete main man. But it's a decision to make because if you are Sir Jim Ratcliffe and you're going, we're a bit tight on FFP now, and then that uh, like a Saudi club, like it, it was uh, reported the other day, like a Saudi mm. club come in for a hundred plus million. Oh, I can't be, say no could, to that. Yeah, it could be, it, it could oh. be kind of something that forces their hand a little yeah. bit. But then Bruno also might not. He wanna seems go. like he loves United. That's the thing. I, I, I can't Bruno see Bruno. Bruno and don't want to go anywhere. And that's to a certain extent kind of invaluable to the club. 
a player who they genuinely just want to stay here and they want to be part of the club more than anything else. Mm. You can't really buy that. Well, Even I think under Eric, as long as he's here, Bruno will be the main man. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Like on the pitch, in, the, in dressing yeah. room, off the pitch. Like he just. Think, yeah, it's, it's not. Be. Maybe if you know, you know, I might lose out on 20, 25 million selling Bruno in three years rather than now, but that's 20, 25 million that will be worth it, in my opinion, at mm. least. Well, to sum it up then, is this the year for the revival, 2024? <laughs> when you know we say what? revival, yes. what do we mean as well? <laughs> Winning a title, yeah. Winning a getting back in into around. Europe. <laughs> Getting get some form of Europe, what, is, what does revival even Honestly, mean? Honestly, my honest answer is I really hope so. Because <laughs> I know as much as, you know, we looked all, like Ten Hag has shown that he is a decent manager. Like, yeah. At, yeah. at least at Ajax, and you, you can only look at Ajax for so long, yeah. but he is a decent manager. And although results have been pants this year, he has had the injuries, although that's obviously that's only a part of an excuse. It's still a fact that it's true that we had injuries, and I just hope so. I really hope so. But... If it isn't, and in six months' time we're sat here again and we're still going, oh, it's not looking good, I think in the summer, yeah. it just might be the end. And yeah. then who do you get in? Start again, in your start again, whole new players, whole new system, all of that. Might have to happen. Bored if you've of got it, a whole, if bored you, of it. If you've got a whole <laughs> yeah. new, we've never had this whole new structure. structure. Like, this is different. Yeah. Like, this isn't like just sat in the manager and do the same thing again. Yeah. We've got a whole. Yeah, we've so. got Omar Brad from Man City, bro. <laughs> yeah. And we don't, we're going to have a sporting director by then going to have a head of recruitment by all these different things the pieces are going to be, be in place so when you do this time when you do actually get a new manager if we did mm. it would be like well okay well yeah. let's see it's up, yeah. it's, it's up yeah. to Eric I think it is yeah if he, if he can concede some of the power he has yes I think it, it can work yeah because he's got that whole veto on transfers and stuff I, I think if he concedes it and allows people to do stuff around him and he just focuses on you know putting the 11 out and the tactics and not necessarily the transfers and what goes on upstairs, I think it can work. Mm. I, f I don't know why he wouldn't as well, because like obviously there's reports saying that he doesn't really want to give up that control. But every, that's the, that's, yeah, the I'd say that, I, I'd say that, <laughs> But I'd say that's the one thing, the main thing, maybe apart from like the um, progression in his tactical like kind of style, that's the main thing which everyone says. They're like, he's wasted money, he's wasted this. But if he goes, all right, Fair enough, I, I, I thought I could handle that role. I couldn't, I'll let those guys handle it. Obviously, it's not his decision whether yeah, he's yeah, going to stay or not, decide, but, yeah. but it would be kind of like a, it would take away that part of the criticism and then he can focus on potentially building a different kind of style and he'll have the structure behind him. So that's one thing I would like to see it just because I think it's, it's, be, it's been like a difficult kind of start to his United like kind of tenure like so much going off on off the pitch. He's had to go, he's had to be through the entire kind of sale process, all the kind of controversies off the field, and then the like kind of his felt like transfers not working out how he might have thought they would have. It would be nice if that all that kind of stuff was then fixed. He wasn't doing that, and then we could judge him kind of just on one just sole. Just on role. that exactly. That's why I want to see him be here with this new regime. I really, really do. Yeah. Um, I'm just, I'm just not a hundred percent sure we will. I, I, don't. I don't, especially if we don't get top four. I just think it presents the uh, a, a clear opportunity for them to go. Okay, thank you. It's almost we'll do this all our way, which next one. would be a shame. Would be a shame because, like I said, I would like to see him with a proper structure, with proper support. Yeah. When he wants to get rid of this player, he can get rid of this player. When he wants to bring in this type of player, he can because we're run properly. Yeah, which does take time, but I, we need him from now to the end of the season, like we said, he's got to show something. He's been saying himself, when players get back, I know Leach has just gone down with an injury, that's, that's tough to take. But like he said, we've got players coming back now, and if they're fit, we need to start seeing some Now headway. is his chance to show and it. And Villa on Sunday, if you lose, we're already eight points behind them, and they're Be 11 fourth. points behind top four. Yeah. Forget it. Then it's I think it's, it's not even, it, like, maybe for the, for the club it will be results, but now that he's got, like you said, apart from Leach, his full, almost his full strength squad no it's got to be progression in kind of how we actually play exactly because how many times have we won games this season and it's just been like it's almost been a little bit deflating because you just go we didn't play well didn't play well and then you don't play well when you lose really either so then I think the last two games I don't, I've seen kind of mixed opinions on West Ham how we how we performed I thought it wasn't it wasn't too bad obviously I think half of like their XG all came from set pieces yeah. so like 
th there was that threat. But in open play, I thought we were all right. And like, I don't expect it to go from there to there for, in like a couple of games with the players back. So hopefully in like a, in a month or two, you really see kind of that slow kind of progression of how we actually play. Because th that I'd say that for me, that's the most important that's thing. That's the thing you look for. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Right, you guys let us know down below. Do you think this is, you know, the year for Ten Hag? Should he go? Should he stay? Controversial. Because you know, everyone's got their own opinion. <laughs> yeah. Let us know. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment, all of that. Right, one thing I've been dying to know. How did you guys get on an English GCSE? Uh, I did all right. <laughs> I got a B. Think oh, I not a, bad. I think I got a C or whatever the number. I was going to say, you lot are numbers, isn't you? You lot are young. Yeah, yeah. you done GCSEs. I got nine and an eight. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> yeah. I'm old. Why are we the ones oh, doing this? <laughs> I'm old. And the reason I ask is because our next game show, Anagrams. This so is, I'm going to read out an anagram and you have 30 seconds to kind of think, you know, who could this be? Mm. If neither of you get it, I'll give you a hint. The hint could be really hard. It could be very easy. Yeah. Knowing me, it's probably quite hard. Um, and then another 30 seconds, if any of you get it, gets the point. So first anagram, dehydrating hems. Dehydrating hems. D e h y d r a t i n g. I'm assuming it's full name, kind of. Yes, full name. Yeah. First name and surname. What? Is in there. I'll give you. Yep. Yeah, I'll give you another like 15 seconds. Smichael. I was thinking. No, that. no, it's not. No D. Uh, right. No. First guess. Either of you? Do you know anything? No. I ain't got a clue. No. I got right. a Scooby. Clue, he was part of the 1999 squad. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Where's the G? Oh, there's uh, a G. Yeah. Just, it's not him. It's not. Uh, uh, Teddy Sheringham? Teddy Sheringham. Bingo! Oh. Well done, Kane. Done well there. Teddy Sheringham. I was just thinking of That's long names. I was yeah, thinking of long names. It's the names. D that was getting me. I was like, <laughs> yeah. D, D. Oh, Next I'll one. That. I'll take that. Observer in pain. This is me watching most United games. <laughs> Bloody <laughs> hell. Um, Patrice Evra. Nope. Oh. No. Oh, I've got to be there. Bastian Schweinsteiger. Nope. No. It's got a P. It's got a P in it. I feel like I, I, oh. I, I'll, I'll take the clue. You guys, and then you guys what, one guess and I'll give you a clue. It's not Paul. Robin Van Persie. Oh, well done, yes. Robin Van Persie. Yes. The clue is going to be that you played for two Prem clubs. <laughs> oh, that would have been Next hard one, anyway. <laughs> this is my personal favourite. Go on. Snail coordinator. Oh, my. Brilliant. Oh, um, Bastian Schneiderlin? No. No. Scott McTominay? No. No. Cristiano. Cristiano Ronaldo? You gonna lock that one in? Yeah. It is, well yeah, done. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm gonna lock that in, yeah. You're smashing this, mate. <laughs> you're better than me at this. <laughs> I couldn't get I'm the fluent. first one, but now my head's in it. Right, next one. Over cold in lift. Rude Van Nistelrooy. No. No. Over cold in lift. This is the one that I thought was the easy one. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Are there any, any current players in this? There could be. Oh, God. Kane, you really got to pick this up here. You're being <laughs> smashed. There's <laughs> only 2 1 in there. Um, oh, yeah, true. You got sharing them, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, he did. It's the F and the T. Right, I'll give you a clue. Go on. He currently plays for the club. <sighs> Le Lissandra Martin. No, 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 no. no. Lindelof. Dallow. Victor Lindelof. Yeah. Well done. Oh, it's Victor Lindelof. It was Victor when you Lindelof. said Dallow, I thought I'd lost it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, saw, yes. I said Diego Dallow and I just saw a V and I was like, oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Next one. No, Barney Bruins. So B R O O N S. Barney Bruins. It's so obvious when you know what they are. <laughs> but yeah. I didn't know, when I looked through these initially, I didn't know a single one. Uh, 
I'm hoping everyone else is struggling as much. Yeah, as well. I don't <laughs> want to feel stupid. There's only one person in the comments each time. Oh, they're all going to know. They're yeah. going to know. Um, it's like when you're watching gaming shows and you know all the answers, but if you had to go on the chase, yeah. you lose. Oh, yeah. Right, he was a former captain. Brian Robson. Oh. Brian Robson, well yeah. done. Yeah, because when he said, yeah, he could see straight yeah. after that, yeah. Last one. Odd goat oil. That is... David De Gea, no, uh, sure. Uh, oh, it's really short, that's annoying me. I want to get it as it is. <laughs> I don't want a clue, I want to get this. Um, I'd be sad. Cantona, no. Not Cantona. That is well short though. Yeah, it? it's yeah. really short. L with a T in it and O A. Nah. Dunno. Go for the clear. Go Signed in twenty eighteen. Uh Diego Dallo. Diego oh. Dallo, well done. That Come one's on. easy as well when you see it like yeah. that. Oh, was that all of them? Was it? Ah, oh, four, 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 two. two. I'll, I'll take that, to be honest. I thought I was going, I thought I was blanking that. To be honest, line. I've got a couple, mate, that were from the clue, not the actual <laughs> anagram. <laughs> so I can't really, you know, take too much glory in that. But Anagrams is an age-old game. You know what else is old now? Old Trafford. Mm. It really is Old Trafford. Yes. We're going to need to talk about this because the Telegraph, with an absolute bomber last week, saying that Sir Jim Ratcliffe is considering building a new stadium. Should he? It's a touchy subject, isn't it? It's a it touchy is, but subject. I think he should. I absolutely think he should. I think what's really important with this topic, which is hard for us as United fans, is to separate the emotion from the reality slash where we want to go, right? And what we want to return to, right? And if Man United are going to get back to the top, our standards have to be higher. We have to get more revenue again. We have to have the best in class on the pitch, off the pitch, stadium, women's team, training ground, the campus around Ultra. Everything should be yeah. the best. We and need it all. We need it all. And I think that because we've been so poor uh, for so long, we've, we've forgotten that. Because, we, because we're so rubbish, we basically don't... That thing of, well, we're, we're Man United. Harlan should want to come here, or Bellin and yeah. why? We know why they're not coming now. We've, we've, but because we've sort of been dead as a doormat for ages, it's like we forget. We want to get back there. Real Madrid and Barcelona, look what they've just done. Barca said, no, nope. Real Madrid just built a new thing around the thing they've got, the Bernabeu. No, nope, we're knocking down the new camp, we're restarting. The, mm. Mate, the new Ronaldinho's well. played there. Yeah, Messi's yeah. played there. Like, the history that's in the new camp has not stopped them from going, but we're Barcelona though, yeah. first. Yeah. I went to the new Camp a couple of summers ago and as I was walking around it, you kind of go, A, wow, this is amazing, it's the new Camp. And B, you go, it's just like a big bowl. It's really, oh, it's a big yeah, concrete bowl. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You want, like, you yeah. know, the new Spotify new Camp, it looks awesome. And I, I want that. When Spurs are building their new stadium, you're like, whoa, this is awesome. And that's another thing, bro. And I do mean this with the greatest of disrespect. <laughs> Spurs. Spurs. <laughs> Spurs. Is, yeah. If a team like Spurs, bro, who, are in the conversation for absolutely nothing, don't win anything, and are not a big club, yeah? Are having ambition to, to make themselves financially sustainable and have that stadium, which I've been to a good few times. It is amazing. It's beautiful. It's amazing stadium, right? What, if Liverpool, don't get me wrong, they haven't knocked down Anfield and start again, but they are expanding on top of it. If City, yeah, on the Etihad campus can put the co-op arena attached to the flipping stadium, for boxing fights, for concerts, for... Bro, Euro 20... Um, is it Euro 26? No, sorry. Well, that 28. 28, sorry. Yeah. They're not using Old Trafford. Not using yeah. Old Trafford. It's going to kill someone. Excuse me? How? How? Ma Man crazy. United... We got, the, we got the biggest stadium in the Premier League still. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But it's not fit for purpose, bro. And, it's, and you know what? When I saw that, that it's not going to be on there, I went, I can see why. It's not mm. too surprising. You'd rather go Spurs a stadium over us. You'd rather go to um, Arsenal Stadium over us to, to, to host something. You'd rather go to, um, obviously, obviously Wembley. Probably London Stadium. London as well, Stadiums, yeah. just in general. Yeah. Like, it's old, bro. That's the thing Sorry. as well. I think a lot of fans like, aren't thinking about those external clubs. Like, 
if all these clubs weren't making such like crazy additions to their own stadiums or moving their move into a new stadium and building up it might not be as big of a kind of like topic or United might not be thinking about it. But when you see like, like you said, Barca, Real Madrid, the big Spurs, clubs. And, and then and the, the, big, the big clubs <laughs> and then you've got like Spurs and kind of, it's, I, I, I won't blame anyone for kind of saying that they want to keep Old Trafford because I, I kind of like understand their views, especially if they're like a regular match going fan. Like mm. that, that's kind of people, but when you go into Old Trafford, you just feel it, don't you? So I can, I can understand that side. But also, like you said, you've got a kind of move emotion and like the right decision. Especially because, and I'm more saying this because we can't renovate it. Well, it's like 800 million to renovate yeah. it. And it's like, it's like you're getting pointless. towards a billion, mate. Just yeah. build the thing again and have state of the art technology in there. Have screens galore. Have bloody the best hospitality. And some and decent I'm saying, Wi-Fi. Yeah, <laughs> and decent Wi-Fi, which actually has got a lot better, actually. Has uh, it? Yeah, it has. Yeah. Um, but I'm like, if for Man United, if we again, if we want to hold ourselves to that level, which we do as United fans, unless I'm missing something, unless we don't want to be the best in class anymore, unless we don't want to have the biggest and the best stadium, the biggest, the best playing squad, the best facilities, I don't get it. I get like what's gone before us and what's happened in Old Trafford, but we have to make new memories. We have to make new history. Also, like you said at the start, there, I'm hoping like those fans who are completely against the new stadium. Yeah. I hope they don't get like, if it is Ratcliffe and Ineos kind of leading that decision. I think a lot of people need to realise that it's kind of almost a forced hand with how much it would take to just renovate the current stadium. You've got to, basically, it, it, it's kind of forced his hand because the way that the Glazers kind of ignored it for so many years, exactly. it's almost like a forced decision. So if you if you are kind of one of those supporters who are completely against it and it happens it's not something to go at Ratcliffe with if they're the team kind of running that project or it, yeah kind of taking that on taking that challenge on so yeah it's kind of a I look, think it's a forced decision look at that as well option one right is 800 million not to redevelop the whole stadium just the Sir Bobby Charlton stand yeah so how lot. insane that is so I didn't I've I sent this graphic in because I really wanted to talk about it so it's just the Credit to the Times for this, for those who aren't watching and they say it said on Spotify. It's a graphic showing how much land United own around Old Trafford and where the new stadium could be built. And if I'm right, that's behind the Stretford end, pretty much. Yeah. I yeah. think. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And it's... Old Trafford doesn't even need to go. Yeah, we could still stay that. in it. So well, yeah. ideally, in an ideal world, give me four and a half billion... might have to start a bit of the Stretford end, maybe. Like, as they're doing yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah. what I'd maybe love that. to happen is Old Trafford reduce it a little bit, maybe make it, I'll say a little bit, maybe 30,000 seat stadium and have, you have know, re renovate everything and, and have the women's in the academy play there because they play at Lee Sports Village at the moment, which is meh. If you've ever been Lee Sports Village, <laughs> get in there from around like Old Trafford kind of, it's, it's a nightmare. Mm. It's like, yeah. it, you'd get at such, especially when you do find it weird with how kind of, um, loved United's Academy is, especially at the moment as well with mm. uh, how well the 18s are doing. I know they play at Carrington, but the 21s usually play at Lee Sports, I think. And if you have those, if you have those 21s playing right next to kind of, because I think City do it, don't they? They do they? it, yeah. It's yeah. right next to. Yeah. And then you'll get better, Real Madrid do it. better attendances. Make it, make it the whole Manchester United area. Like, like yeah. you said, like, you know, it's the city, city campus, it's the Etihad mate. campus. Taking a it's piss. a whole yeah. thing. Hey, well, when I went there, it was the last derby, it was the six when it was 4-0 at half yeah. time. Was well, that last season? I think so. It was last season, isn't it? If yeah, so, I deleted out of my mind. Yeah, it was 6-4. Oh, Remember? with Martial scored oh, a couple yeah. off the off Yeah, the yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. 6-3 yeah. game yeah. where Haaland three? and... Yeah, yeah. yeah. 6-3, yeah, and we, well, we were 4-0 down at half time. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So, um, that game. And then I went there and I, I was walking across the bridge and I just looked to the left. I thought, what's this big, what's this? What are they doing now? <laughs> and I just read, co-op arena. <laughs> Yeah, it I said nah. Nuts, I said we're, we're finished. Yeah, we're finished, bro. That is a lot of land on it's there. It's massive. You so got a if lot Man of land. United own all that, and if you've been there, obviously that's quite industrial. There's got stuff yeah. there and that. I know what, the, what that looks like, but if they own all that land, I would want Man United to do exactly that. Build that. If you want to reduce yeah. Old Trafford after that, no problem. You can modernise it, take it down a little bit, do a few few bits to it. Um, but if not, then there's so much scope there, and I, I want to. Honestly, I, Wembley has 90,000 seats. I should have 90,005 yeah. seats. I want, like, <laughs> want 95,000 seater stadium. 100%, bro. 100%. <laughs> I, I, 
I don't know why we wouldn't do that. I just think, well, then it's only for the, the memories that, that will still be there. They're memories. They yeah. can't be erased. It's also I, not like it's, um, it, like if this is kind of what's going to go ahead, it's not like it's a massive location movie. Well, li- it's literally just, just literally back was to it, back. Was, was, it, was it West Ham? Yeah. Who it's like it where moved. Upton uh, Upton Park was quite um, yeah Upton away Park. away from yeah. London Stadium and that was kind of a big talking point for their fans at the start yeah. because it's like your your walk which you've done with your dad for like thirty yeah, years like that's that kind of yeah. whereas this is still gonna be quite it's, it's, there, the, it's, set, it's the same like it's yeah. not an MK Don's flipping going from Wimbledon <laughs> and just saying we're just yeah. packing up and the, going over there the uh, blueprint I'd love to see the club take from is when the Millennium Stadium was being built in Cardiff yeah. so the, the way that it happened was there was a Cardiff Arms Park rugby stadium where obviously the Wales rugby team would play and it's still there and it's quite literally backed so on the back the side of it, yeah. to the Millennium Stadium yeah, the Millennium that, Stadium yeah. is I love it there well Principality Stadium yeah, yeah. Was it Millennium nice stadium. stadium it's a fantastic stadium in Cardiff and all they did was they um, they just preserved the original stadium and then they made that where the women's team played, the academy team played, then you got the Millennium Stadium for when all kind of the, you know, the big games play. And the academy team's women's team, they've sold out Old Trafford. Yeah. Was it FA yeah. 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 Cup Youth Final? Exactly. They sold out Old Trafford. I but, think. Having it, but doing it that big every week. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Reduce it like 30,000. Yeah. The bricks that you take off the current Old Trafford, but save them, them. Yeah. make a concourse on the new one. There's yeah. so much called, to do. Tottenham called still got Ineos the same Arena, spot. Ineos Arena yeah. or something. Do you know what I mean? I don't know why they went forward to Mark Watt, but yeah. they do. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Do you know what I mean? So it would, uh, I, I'd love I, it. I, I but I do get stadium. that, obviously, I don't necessarily have the same connection to Old Trafford that others would yeah. have simply because... Mm. They go every, every it, week yeah. for the... And but also, I, feel like not, not, I wasn't there during I think that connection, if you're not careful, can basically... Hinder the club's progress. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Part you of can anything. Respect what's happened. Yeah, part of and life is just on. evolution. Like, yeah. how Old Trafford was even now versus how it was back then is different. You know, mm. and now it's yeah. just got to the maximum stage of like, right, the modern day old. demands of being a top football club, a top institution in the world, demand you to have state of the art this, state of the art that. And Old Trafford doesn't have it, man. Yeah. Like, when I go there as a fan, as a, as a United fan, I still like it. That's just because I love going to watch my team. Yeah. As soon as I get in there, I see the red seats. I'm like, oh, right, like. Yeah, but I'll be honest, even, even that's, it's like, because it's, it's mixed with bad times right now, but it's still our home. I get it. But we're still going to be there. But it's just going to look even better. We'll make new history. Yeah. That's how I, would, I feel. I, I, like you said, I, I would love it to be kind of like a new stadium next to it and kind of, take Old Trafford down to like 30,000 ish, 25 maybe, mm. and have the youth and women play there. I think it makes so much sense. Even if, to be fair, even if you don't use Old Trafford as that, having a, a second stadium for the youth and women near, Dude, closer. Wicked. Yeah. Because it makes it more kind of like, like you said, with City, it kind of looks more like one club altogether if yeah. when they're all next to each other kind of thing. Not taking like a, yeah. an hour, hour, Exactly. The same with the new, the new um, training ground, if they want to do that. Hopefully they can build this big mega complex that has everything there. Yeah. But they were talking about trying to keep Carrington and then moving yeah. the first team all the way down there. Yeah. Don't there's, really want to do that. There's no shame in copying Man City. Honestly, no. I don't think but it's, not, it's, it's, it's not just copying City. It, yeah, true. It's, it's copying, copying success. It's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, it's like, you know. That's what we need to sit And also, like, of. City have proven that that model is likely to, or not likely to, but it can make you best team in Bro, the world. Bro, we've got Omar Barada now. Yeah. So <laughs> let him do it. All doesn't of it. like so <laughs> anything to do with like trying to turn our nose up because old City did that or that. Do you want Man United to be good or not? Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. That's where I'm at. And everyone was copying United when United yeah. were really successful. So it's like, <laughs> but yeah, no. It's a, we, we need it's to admit that we've fallen off a cliff 100%. and then spend a load of money to get back up there. Absolutely. I, I, it's crazy how big of a topic this is, though. Yeah. Like it's splitting a lot of people. Like either completely one way or completely the other, I feel like a lot of people mm. I've seen. So, yeah. Mm. I'm just looking at the old tra- big old Trafford thing there now. Yeah. Oh. Get used to it, mate, because it's not going to look like that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's going to be screens all over the well, top new of New Trafford. Yeah. <laughs> the, the new old Trafford. Yeah. It'd probably be called like Ineos Arena or something, wouldn't it? No, they got, they still got called Old Trafford. I, I think Ratcliffe did say, I think he said that he'd never... Yeah, never, never put... Please, um, thank you. I don't want Bet365 Stadium. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> Hold Maybe that. a new ask kit sponsor instead. <laughs> there you go. Not to end on too much of a sour note, but about a week and a half, two weeks ago, last day of the transfer window, Isak Cantonara left the club in what was a bit of a mismanaged 
kind of couple of years of Phil and Kane. You wrote an article last yeah. week um, for us about the inside story. But if you want to just let people know what actually happened and how did he actually, you know, leave United? Yes, yeah, so it's a really interesting one and one that a lot of people who the people who don't even follow the youth they knew that he was a good talent. So when it was news that he left to the Bundesliga. Maybe a bit of surprise because there was some positives which I'll go into and potential development that United thought he might sign a new contract. But it all goes back to when he, when he signed under Solskjaer in 2020. Them two had a, quite a close relationship. Um, I think you kind of can assume that because they're both, both Norwegian, but I think Harry Robinson, uh, um, kind of United-based journalist, he's got a really good um, kind of podcast as well, I believe. He reported basically that that connection was was close, and they, I think um, Solskjaer really helped him kind of integrate into that tough environment because he joined in 2020 in the pandemic, as did Garnacho, that kind of a youth player joining, coming from a different country, yeah, tough. tough time, and Solskjaer kind of helped that uh, calls to the family home, kind of keeping close contact, and obviously Solskjaer left, Ten Hag came in, Ten Hag really rated Isaac. Um, I believe I remember just after the FA Cup final loss against City, uh, I heard that Hanson Aaron was actually in and around the training squad. He went to Wembley with the. I, I don't remember if it was. I don't remember if it was like a midfielder was kind of like on the edge of being fit or not. I don't know if it was Ericsson, but there was a, he was in and he around traveled. the squad. Obviously. He travelled. He helped with the train. He he helped kind of be an extra man in training and was there in case I think. So that it shows that he was rated and in the summer. He, um, I think a lot of people would have wanted him to go on loan. He had a year left, left on his contract, so you, ideally you think a loan, then you can sort the contract out, he gets men's football, because he, mm. he had played it. Interesting one as well, he played men's football in Norway at 15. That's w- before we bought him, he, I think he played seven games in a row, or six or seven games in for um, Tromso, I believe it was. So he, he had that taste and then didn't get it for a few more years. That might have made his, de- made his decision as well, um, mm. being part of it. But we didn't send him in the summer. And there were some quotes from him after that transfer window where he did, he, he kind of sent the message where it was, we can go on loan, and I can go on loan potentially in January. There were some disagreements, I think it was. There were some disagreements this summer about a loan move. So I'll work, work in the 21s. It, you fast forward, but then the problem is you fast forward to January and he's got six months left on his contract. And that's when kind of United's issue came, especially after that Wigan game in the FA Cup where out of the nine substitutes, seven were academy players, I believe, and Isaac wasn't on there. And I think after that, reports kind of emerged that he, that he was unhappy with the kind of opportunities he'd got. He didn't get into a squad. No, uh, I was going to say, he didn't, 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 he didn't get into, didn't squad, get did into a squad, let alone kind of his, onto his debut. And he's one of, it makes it quite a confusing kind of situation because he was highly rated by both the club and Ten Hag. But you go through that January window and United started to make movements. I think it was around midway through that window where United District, we found out that there was kind of significant developments for the move to kind of, there were significant developments for him to potentially stay. I think United offered a significant contract for him, but that wasn't going to be, I think I, as well, when I reported that, I tweeted that, that wasn't going to be the thing that was going to make the deal, break the deal, because he had interest. United, pro- I, I, don't, I don't know the details about what other, pe- other clubs were offering, because mm. there was a couple other clubs reported it as interested in him. But United matched, even matched or got in and around that kind mm. of um, area, Same I assume, time. with with the kind of significant offer, but it was all going to be about the progression to potential first team involvement. And towards the end of the window, there was positive developments because United were planning to loan him out if they were mani- managed to get him to sign that deal. So that kind of shows you that they were thinking about that, but that came out a couple of three or four days before the end of the window. So he then made the decision, I think him, and there's various stories who, who you speak to, but some will say that his agent is a bit of a um, difficult man to deal with. Some will say that he just wanted to play first team football. He didn't care about the wages. It's kind of a, that part of the si- scenario and that part of the story mm. is kind of a mixed one. And you do believe that 
where he's gone kind of proves that it does seem like it's where what what um, kind of opportunities he was going to get because he's gone to Werder Bremen for first team football. That's because he he's a very talented player. There was other clubs kind of interested. He could have went potentially went to maybe Atletico Madrid. I think were interested. Um, a couple of others that I forget. I think Napoli might have been, but he wanted the kind of consistent the first team minutes. Yeah. Is there a buyback and stuff? So with Isaacs. It's, a, it's an interesting one because it's not a buyback. He, I think United have got the um, matching rights right, okay. that, so they can match an offer. Um, I don't know if that kind of how long that runs for, but they've got the matching and they've got um, a significant, significant kind of um, add-ons in the deal. And the reason that United went through and kind of, because they wanted to keep him and then this kind of, he kind of wanted to go. So they, they switched their movements they had um, they had kind of a security blanket of if he did leave at the end of his contract, they still would have got um, some cash anyway. I, I, I think the word escapes me right now, the kind of technical term, but mm. they still would have got some cash back. It was compensation, wasn't it? So, uh, I, some, I don't think it was compens- the word okay. compensation, but it was, it's basically that which protects you from youth team players kind of leaving on a free. Yeah. That... Um, United were going to stick with that and, unless they got higher bids of that amount. So that's what kind of when they turned. And like I think we mentioned a few weeks ago, where it's kind of quite nice to see that that could have been an absolute disaster show with, with Isaac being a really talented player, United letting it go too long. We've seen it before kind of with Angel, Angel Gomez. United let him go for free, didn't get anything, and now he's a consistent starter for uh, Lille. With Isaac, they are protected, like they are if Alvaro, if Alvaro Fernandez leaves mm. or um, Hannibal. Hannibal. Oh. So they're more protected. So that it's you see, it's we're trying to do things differently. It's a complica- uh, uh, the Isaac one's a bit of a complicated story, I'd say, because of the kind of the, the moving parts, especially just this, uh, this last month, kind of in January. United had to react to different kind of things. So, yeah, it's an interesting one. I might have missed out a couple of bits yeah. from the story. So... Um, yeah. It's on our website if you want to kind of check out the full thing. But, yeah, so it's an interesting one. I think one it's, um, look, at the end of the day, we have to remember that not. We know every academy player can't make it through to the first team. And the levels that, that he have to be to not only mix it with the first team, but actually start coming out the academy is so high. Look how good Kobe Maynard is. You have to yeah. look like that. We've seen, we've seen the likes of Chong. We've seen the likes yeah. of Hannibal. I remember watching Chong, right? Obviously, with his big bushy hair, he's so he's very striking. But he was running rings, running ring, running riot at academy level, where we're like, who's this kid? Oh my god! Yeah. Jesus. Same with Hannibal. At some points, you know, Alanga did it as well. Maybe not so much as Strong and Hannibal did, but we looked at them. We're like, oh, these guys are, you know. And you see it. You know, Dylan Levitt was another one. Remember, like, what's happening? When we're going to get to see him? Charlie Savage was doing well. Him and Zidane Iqbal done well on tour. And it's like you want to get these players sort of um, in and around it, but it doesn't always work out and it's really hard to do it. Yeah. Ten Hag's got a good track record of doing that. Ganacho coming in at the same time, look where he is now. Look at Kobe Mainu now. Um, so, look, I, I just think, fair enough, at least we're protecting ourselves and I hope that, that Isaac goes and gets the first team football that he thinks he deserves and he's ready for and then we can see him flourish and see where it goes. I still think it's, it's evidence still, I think, that United are not great with contracts. I think we've in the last like last seven, eight the years, there's been like Ando Herrera was something that personally I was devastated when he left <laughs> because the contract situation was terrible. Yeah, that was bad, yeah. How United dealt with, like, regardless of what you think about David De Gea, how United dealt with his contract towards the end yeah. was a nightmare. And this is another one of he got into the last year of his contract, and then we weren't sure about saying him on loan. I think that is that's a plan you should have two years in advance. You should think, okay, there's two years left on his contract. What are we doing next summer? Mm. That's still, I feel like is a way that United aren't thinking ahead. But that's and why they've done the, the Hannibal and the Alvaro Fernandez that, in that, that type good of way. Stuff. That's why I they like triggered that. Victor Lindelof but not giving him a new deal. Yeah. Triggered Wamba Saka but not giving him a new I deal. I like that, but I still feel I mean, like it's a little but, late. And yeah, so, for example, with what Ten Hag said today about there's still no final decision on Varane, like yeah. we knew, United knew that his contract was, well, obviously they knew when it was going to end from the moment he signed it. I feel like now we're leaving it a little late to say to him, look, we're going to offer you reduced. Cause but I, there might not be, but that might, he might say, yeah, I know he said that in the press today, but the context could be deeper because yeah. it could we be. might not have made a decision yet because Varane hasn't. We might have already said to Varane, listen, we, we're going to reduce, you're going to, here's reduced terms. He's like, 
I'll let you know. Because he has the power now. Yeah. Is, that, power. is that not something that... I f I obviously, we only see what comes mm. out. We don't know what's happening inside the club. So just from my perspective, from what we do see, I still feel like United leave things too late. 100%. I think they still leave yeah. things too as late. As it's well. so with, annoying. With yeah. that Varane st stuff, I feel like I'd be more confident if that entire De Gea saga didn't yeah. go on last summer. It's basically the same, same situation. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. going to go. Varane's going to leave. Yeah. I, I can't see Varane saying, I'll go down to 110 or something. Big Varane, like my CV's long, I'm a World Cup winner, I'm five Champions League, four Champions whatever it is. I'll just go Saudi, mate, and get whatever it is. <laughs> or, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, or I'll go back to France and then I, at least I can just be near Varane's home been offered just... a, what, reportedly, a, what was it, £50 million pound two year contract? Who? Varane, like a week yeah, ago. Yeah, reports from Saudi. saying for yeah. Saudi. So Saudi is the place Ronaldo's to go club. if, if you win. Same for Casemiro as well, if someone big comes in for him. Would you sign for Saudi? <laughs> If you had the chance, sign for Saudi Arabia. Take United you know, to Saudi now. If you're a professional footballer, would, like, would you go? Depends what kind of situation you are in your it career. It does depend. Does depend. I, I, I think like, if you're in your prime, I, I still don't think... Because once you're earning like 150 grand or whatever, like, you're still going to be eating good on you. Yeah. So different <laughs> so money, bro. Yeah, like, it's different Jordan, money. Like Jordan Anderson, but he went for a few months, yeah. what, offered like 700 grand a week. Said went no, for a few months, me. hated it. He's now at Ajax. Yeah. He can still be at Liverpool, still be club captain, yeah. uh, probably. Um, obviously, I think with Klopp going eventually, I think maybe Henderson would have been shipped off, but I don't know. I no, don't know, it, it does depend. I, it, like it does, I mean, remember when Oscar went to China really young? Yeah. yeah. And it was like, wow, Pinek, mate, he's young. He's about 24, 25 when he did that. And yeah. it's like, but some people are just, listen, this is not a long career, football. Oh, it's generational wealth Take we're talking you about. Get, I guess, yeah. Big, big numbers to go to Saudi. So, I'm, listen, I'm all for players. If you want to set your family up and then your kids' kids and your grandkids and your great-grandkids, because that's the sort of money we're talking about, what some, these guys are getting. A lot of players can be an injury away from, like, their career. Never playing over. again. Yeah. So, I don't blame yeah. them, yeah, but so I think it does depend on the individual. I, should, yeah. I don't think I'd do it. I really don't think I do. I'd he rather, says re I'd now. rather retire. <laughs> yeah. He Wait, says now. now. He's at Man United, not getting a game. <laughs> can't kick, can't kick a ball. Al Etifat come in. We we'll give you flipping two hundred ninety grand a week when you was on twenty grand a week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, right, mate. <laughs> you're on, <laughs> you're on the first flight. flight out. I know I'll never 100%. be proved wrong because I'm not good enough. <laughs> yeah. I'm never. I'd never go. No. But I think that wraps up another successful show, episode three. If you guys enjoyed episode three of What the Devil. Please let us know any improvements, any comments, let us know. Make sure you smash the like button, subscribe. Thank you, we'll see you next Thursday. <laughs>